Good evening. Welcome to another edition of Native Voice TV. I'm Sundas Martinez. And I'm Siwapili Rose Amador, and together we are Native Voice TV. We are the Indigenous people. And just like last week, we uh, told you that we're going to bring a com uh, comedian, excuse me, a poet. <laughs> we had so, a comedian last yeah. week. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a poet for you, and uh, Siwapili is going to introduce him for you. Okay, it's my pleasure to okay. introduce Sh Shanawa Littlebow. Welcome, Shanawa, Ooh, and you. you are of the Welcome. Tiwa Nation, is that correct? I am. And how long have you been doing poetry? We'll get a little bit of intro and then we'll ask you to do some poetry. Well, um, I was on the Great Peace March for Global Nuclear Disarmament in 1986. And as I went across that, I was first uh, introduced to John Trudell's poetry. Mm -hmm. And you can actually say that he's my uh, mentor. And uh, from that point on, I started collecting what I call the soup, just phrases and different things that I had up in my mind. And uh, one day it just all came out when I was sitting in Colorado, Boulder, Colorado, and a lot of it just comes to me. So yeah. through the years, that's how, it's how it comes. It's a natural talent. Yes. Wow, that's right. wonderful. Well, if you'd like to do a couple of poems for us, and then maybe you can tell us about what inspired you. Okay. Um, I'd like to share one called The Wolf Cousin. Wolf Cousin. I hear your anguished cry as you howl behind a chain link fence. And my heart is filled with sadness at what has happened to your people. Once a mighty nation that stretched from sea to sea, what you now have is a pittance and shows how pitiful you have been treated. Calling you a savage beast making stories and rumors of fear, calling you an enemy, a pest. But we know, my cousin, what the beast truly is, devouring all that is natural. What has happened to my people is now happening to yours. To spotted owls, our stories are the same. All that is in nature is under siege. And before the mystery, they will be made accountable for the wasteful greed. So sing your song, my cousin. Sing it clear. For your time to be free will come, if not now, in the spirit world. And I call that um, Wolf Cousin because uh, I saw the wolves behind a fence at Wolf Haven one time. And I was sad that this is the only haven they have left behind this Aww. fence, yeah. you know. And uh, then through the years, they did uh, release a few of the wolves in the Yellowstone, and so I felt good about that. But that's basically what inspired that poem. And I had to also put in what the destruction to our native land, mm -hmm. to the native plants, the native wildlife that's going on, and. That tell you that poem was written 15 years ago, and it's just as relevant now as it has been then or yeah. before that time. Yeah, That's they used so to. True. Yeah, they used to kill uh, wolves uh, just like by the hundreds, and just drive by and shoot them. And I think they're still killing a lot of wolves, you know, just yeah. for that, just because they're wolves. I mean, even the the, the little Red Riding Hood thing is, you know, always making the wolf a bad thing. But you know, and like in anything in our culture, we have to have the balance of of nature and, and a lot of us uh, believe that the bear is kind of like the balancer uh, it keeps a man down from taking all everything else but now the new people came in and started shooting and killing the bears so mm. there goes that balance as well. That's true. Well, look at our yeah. weather. Look at what's happening to our weather now. Mm. Yeah, just ruining nature. Share another poem with us. Okay. This next piece um, is about a friend Sitting by the stream, watching nature's necklace wind and flow, the water swirling, the pulp sculpts and spurts singing to me as the sparkle and shine reflection showed me the love light of the spirit of the water. As I sat there taking it all in, loving what I was watching, what I was feeling, I looked up the tree next to me. On this beautiful tree, nailed with torturous nails was a sign a human-made thing, 
The words on it reading, catch and release. Catch and release. Catch and release. I contemplated, wondering, why would anyone want to torture the fish, maim its lips or its gills? Do they not know what they are doing? If you are going to catch a fish, then eat it. Give thanks for the nourishment they provide. How twisted has the society gotten, making a law that let the fish live, but saying with the same breath that it is all right to torture them for the sake of fun, what they call sport. Not wanting to dwell on this sadness, I returned to the beauty of what was in front of me, letting myself open to its sight and its sound, return to the ancient beat of the mystery. Time goes by without counting it or caring to. Then in front of me, right in front of me, a fish leaps out of the water, a moment of sparkling, dazzling, bright, scaly beauty in front of me, free and happy as if to say thank you for your thoughts. Thank you for your love light. Look at me. Your eyes have caught me wild and free. As the fish disappears, the wind blows leaves from the trees and they float down to our mother. And a little fluffy white fairy ball floats across the breeze down to the water and like a ball rolls on the tension of the water where it is lifted by another breeze. Carried further downstream, it plunges in to be washed up on shore, another germinated sea. This is life. I have been blessed. I have been caressed. That's a piece um, called Fish Friend. And, um, this one's built like a ladder, you know. You, you can have it where only a part of it is a poem by itself. And um, the thing is about the poetry, I wanted to go back to the meaning, to what we were taught by elders, to what we've learned from people like Chief Seattle, or Chief Self, uh, and, and his words about why we're destroying the animals, like Wallace Black Elk's words of why we're destroying these things. And I wanted to show the difference in thought, the things that are ingrained in us and still in us after all these centuries of being with the white man. That all these centuries of being basically whitewashed, we still have this very strong, ingrained want to see the beauty return. And that is the basic difference in this poem that I wanted to show, that we have a different point of view mm -hmm. than, than I'll say, the old sportsman. I, I, I once talked to a man who said, um, uh, but I love nature. And I said, then why does something have to be a target when you're out there with yeah. it? I think what, what a lot of people need to think about, especially this poem, you know, got me thinking, is that whoever you believe in, if you're a creator or God or Allah or whatever, they, he did not intend for this world to be the way it is right now. He created beauty with the grass and the animals and everything to live in a balance. And right now, you know, a lot of these big co countries and big co you know, companies are just really destroying mm -hmm. it and we're just poisoning the land and poisoning us and poisoning everything that we eat and breathe and drink. Right. Yeah, it's, it's really a shame, but we all have to, as Americans, as human beings, we all have to start thinking about this, you know, because it not only affects, it affects, it affects everybody. everything, everyone. Yeah. yeah, and you're doing it for money or doing it for yeah. sports. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. sports. Sad. I mean, how Sad. far how far is our greed when we're <laughs> destroying our own our own offspring with poison? That's true. Yeah. So now you mentioned Chief Seattle. You're from Washington now. You live in Washington. Well, I, I do now. Um, I'm, my people are from Artiwa. We're from uh, New Mexico and Texas. But um, as a matter of fact, I just came from mothers and fathers and I helped them move into their new house. They're getting pretty up there in years. And, and uh, so it's uh, been in Seattle because it's a good community, mm -hmm. strong native community. 
although we've been attacked lately, our Indian Heritage School is barely hanging on, and uh, we, we still have a great high, um, high school, but it's changing, and we're, it's a hard uphill battle, and it's a continuous battle. We still have Daybreak Star, the Indian Cultural Center that mm -hmm. was taken over mm -hmm. by, um, I think it was uh, the same time they took over uh, what the uh, island that Alcatraz. You have? Alcatraz. Yeah. Uh, they took over Daybreak Star up there in Seattle. Wow! And they've kept that land since then. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. So, yeah. In fact, my dad was living up in Seattle at that time. He He's probably supportive. involved. Huh? Yeah, he was. <laughs> He's involved yeah, in everything. <laughs> But it's really a pleasure that um, you're here with us and that you were able to stop in San Jose on your you know, on yeah. your trip. Um, can you share another poem? We just want to sure. <laughs> hear it while you're here because we know we're not going to have you here much well, longer. Well, I don't know how many time we have. Um, let me see. I can maybe put out two or three. Go ahead. <laughs> um, this next one is called The Brave. In the language of the Tiwa, there is no word for warrior. Like Squaw, these words came to them from the white man. But there have always been the brave. And it has always taken the brave to protect the people. It has always taken the brave to confront the mountain lion and the bear when they came into camp to take our children. It has always taken the brave to hunt the buffalo for food, clothing, homes. These days are gone now. I never knew them. The fences, trains, wires, and roads disease the land, bleeding the wild and what is truly free to death. Today, as I look across the land, I see the waste, the pollution, the sorrow. I see our children, red, yellow, black, and now white, have become the victim. And as I look into my heart and search my mind, the spirit, the great mystery, calls out for the brave and tells me it will take the brave to confront the waste, the pollution, the multinational corporate greed. Know your enemy. Your enemy is a spirit. It can be in anyone or anything at any time, including yourself. Be brave. It has always taken the brave to protect the people. Pray and be brave, and your spirit will live forever. Wow, that's an inspiring poem. I really enjoyed that one. I, um, that's self-explanatory. Maybe I'll go on to another one. And uh, this one's called The Mirror. And the mirrors of it's, a, it's how to deal with your, with your anger. It's a, it's a powerful poem, and it's called The Mirror. Am I judge, or am I mirror? I am not judge. So how far do I mirror before I become judge? Since I may not be judge, I must know the right path to take. It comes at the point of anger. At that point is where we must choose the correct path. Be careful here. The enemy likes it here and will try to destroy you. Channel your anger to the positive, for positive connects with positive, and positive connects with negative. But if you use the negative path, remember that negative repels negative. You will see brother fight brother and sister fight sister. You will see war, sorrow, pain, destruction. The promise is in your choice. Be positive. Pray for the power to be that way. And you will see rebirth, joy, happiness, love. This is a mystery. The simple teaching that shows us. Be a mirror of light for the people. Wow. That's it's a, nice a powerful one. message. It's interesting that you you just uh, recited that poem because 
on the way over to the studio tonight, we were having this conversation about this whole immigration issue mm -hmm. and how it's turning people against each other, mm -hmm. you know, because you see another culture come out and say, well, they should go through the process, or I had to wait, and then you start, it just turns people against each other, you know, and it just creates so yeah. much hate and... Um, I've seen some ridiculous things on TV, you know, as far as in regards uh -huh. to this immigration thing, and it's mm -hmm. just, it doesn't make any sense. But yeah. as indigenous people, you know, and it doesn't matter if you're south of the border, or north of the border, or here, we all have to stick together and we all have to think indigenous and help one another and unite. Yeah, we're all American Indians mm -hmm. from That's the right. northern tip of Canada to the southern tip of South America. Yeah. It's right. all America. Yeah. So it's American Indians. That's so. right. Or I'd like to say the long version. Native American Indians. <laughs> Indigenous <laughs> Native American Indians. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, include all. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I, I can, true. if I have time, I'd like to share one more poem. Okay, please do. And this is uh, the very first poem I've ever written. As I sit on my mother, the earth, and breathe my father, the sky, it reminds me that when they touch, there is life. When I listen to our elders, I hear their wisdom. When I watch our infant children, I see their wonder. Infants and elders help us keep the balance within ourselves. And as I sit in the sacred hoop of the people, I know that the great mystery is with us. I know that peace, love, caring, and hope are here. And I understand why the elders will always repeat the songs. Oh, thank you, great mystery, for our relations. The sun, the moon, the stars, the clouds, the earth, the water, the plants, the trees, the four-legged, the two-legged, the winged nation, the fish, the creeping and crawling things that take us away so that others may live circle after circle, gathering after gathering, drumbeat upon drumbeat. It is these songs that keep us connected to our natural world. They're our reminder. And when I see an infant child point at a bird, a flower, a butterfly, flutter by and say, what is that? Joy rushes into my heart and over me, for I'm there to tell them that these creatures are our relations, that we are connected. I have become their elder and the reminder. And when I am in myself, I know I'm not alone. For I turn to the great mystery in prayer and ask for the protection of the infant children and the comfort of the elders. And as I sit in the peace of this prayer, a feeling comes through me. A feeling I only know comes from the great mystery. A sweet and gentle reminder you can live forever if you want. It all depends on what you do. Wow. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> it's a good Powerful one. message. Chanel, when I, you are of two different nations, can you tell us? Oh, no, you're from. T1. I'm sorry, T1, T1 nation it was. <laughs> can you tell us where your people are from? You mentioned. What well, time. originally we're from up in New Mexico, but back in. Did you ever live there? Or? No. Okay. No. Just back in 1680, when the Spaniards came up through the Rio Grande, mm -hmm. they uh, captured a lot of the Tiwa, and they moved them and reestablished them down near El Paso. Mm -hmm. oh. So that's the Isleta del Sur. It's oh, a little okay. reservation right, right there just east of El Paso, and so uh, it was a mission. Mm -hmm. So the Spaniards came, basically enslaved the Indians and mm -hmm. had them build for them. Um, but after the English white man came and took over, it became a res. So now it's, it's uh, actual Indian land, it's a res. Mm -hmm. And we're the same people that uh, Mr. Abramoff, called monkeys and troglodytes. So, wow. you know, that's food for poetry. Yeah. <laughs> sure, <laughs> that's your next poem. Yeah. <laughs> now you've been uh, involved a lot in different uh, movements and uh, community activities. Can you tell us about some of them? Well, I walked across the country, like I said, in 1986 
for global nuclear disarmament. That was, uh, that was pretty interesting. Before that, I was uh, helping raise money for the Children and Elders Fund out of Harrisburg with Jimmy Little Turtle. Mm -hmm. um, after that, I walked to stop the Trident missile in from Georgia to Florida. And then there was another wa Florida walk, which I s tried to uh, bring attention toward this Trident submarine and its, its power, its power to destroy the planet. After that, I worked with uh, Dennis Banks in trying to uh, restructure the way they were telling Columbus' story. Mm -hmm. um, that was at the University of uh, Florida in Gainesville. Yeah. And um, well, a lot of other things in between. I uh, worked with um, Dave Chief, um, Wallace Black Elk when he was alive. Um, I w with him for a couple times, another time with Dennis. Um, I was. So you've traveled the country. Yeah, on a on a big uh, on a great peace march, we tried to get a delegation of the peace march to go down to um, the Dene and Hopi reservation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At that time, uh, they had the retreat there too. I think they still do, but um, we wanted to get information on all the uranium tailings that have been left behind and all the um, houses they built out of uranium tailings that were on the reservation they actually yeah. had Indian people living in. And we wanted, I wanted to get that delegation and that was like pulling teeth on the peace march, but wow. I wanted to show that no, global nuclear disarmament isn't just taking down the bombs, it's from tending the poor people down and flashing the dollar sign in front of them, sending them down into the shafts where they actually dig up the uranium ore. These mm -hmm. people get sick. They yeah, took sure. it, got it on their clothes, took it home to their children. Yeah. After they hug them and hug their wives, you know, and, and so that's basically a lot of what I've done. You've done a lot of good work and we appreciate all your hard yeah. work. It, 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 it's a shame that, you know, that more people wouldn't, you know, help you out. Well, how can someone get in touch with you? Well, um, like right now I live in Seattle and uh, I, my information is on the on, on the, the screen. Great. And, well, uh, thank you so much for joining really us today. It. We do thank appreciate you, you thank being you very here. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. And we have some quick announcements. Yes, before we the do. Show ends, yeah. So let's get into them. Uh, Native Town of Program 490 North 1st Street, San Jose. Um, contact number 280-2280. Lots of good services there for the Native community. Yes, definitely. And the Women Empowered to Move Ahead program offered by the Center for Training and Careers. They have orientation every Monday at 10 a.m. at uh, 1600 Las Plumas Avenue in San Jose. Tune in to Indian Time Radio, KKUP 91.5 FM, every Tuesday from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. with Jack Hyatt and David Romero. And watch the National Council of La Raza Elma Awards, and it's on ABC Monday, June 5th, 6.30 p.m., and there's Eva Longoria, so tune in, a lot of indigenous people on the show. And Uwali is coming June 15th, uh, Santa Cruz. And that's them in the background right yeah. there we're listening to. Beautiful right. music. And if you want to see them in person, go to Santa Cruz on June 15th or on June 10th. They will be at Table Mountain Casino. In, there's a powwow going on there. Yeah. And that's in Fryant, California, near Fresno. Mm -hmm. And that is at 8 p.m. on June 10th, so go by there. And also, they will be in San Jose. Native Voice TV and the Native TANF program is sponsoring them a reception for them on June 13th from 6 to 8 at 490 North 1st Street. That's the Native TANF offices. And come by and see your lolly. They'll be signing autographs. Uh, honoring our elders gathering June 16th, 17th, and 18th. Uh, Mount Madonna County Park. And there's your friend. <laughs> there's Dennis Banks with El Observador newspaper, and he encourages you to read it as we do as well. Na um, El Observador is a sponsor of Native Voice TV, and we want to give a shout out to Artbeat who provided these beautiful paintings that we've been looking at yeah. throughout the show. Great. Uh, Thank you, Artbeat. Yes. 
Also, remember uh, Leonard Peltier, 30 years of false imprisonment. Have you thought about Leonard today? And make sure you give a donation when you go out to the powwow. They always have a booth out there. Stop by, get a t-shirt, buy a bumper sticker or something to support Leonard's defense. Ah, don't forget to vote. Vote, vote, vote. That's we the main thing. We want people to go out and vote because, you know, that's what makes a difference. We elect people who make decisions on funding for a lot of Native programs. Um, I'm voting in the council, in the mayor's election, and I'm voting for a woman. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Me too. You too. Okay. <laughs> Good choice. Yeah. <laughs> Make sure you watch Native Voice TV. We're on every Sunday at 6 p.m. with great guests as we had today. And we're looking forward to seeing you right in front of the TV watching us. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Become a sponsor. You know, you could contact us at 408-251-3165. Or you can contact us at Native Voice TV at AOL.com. And yeah. you can become a sponsor, too. Yeah. So we'll definitely. see you next week. Good night. Good night. Children's eyes.